Shalom. Call hello, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Raka Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who taught me this truth and rule well. Salutation and salutations to the brothers out there that are laboring and pushing this truth in truth and in sincerity and in charity and risking their lives and their freedom to do so. To you I say Shalom. To the Akiam and to the Akwath, that will be your brothers and sisters. Adawan Rataza, that is to say, Lord willing, hopefully by the end of this lesson, you'll be edified. This is your brother Amawan Ibad, back again with another lesson. To the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, to feed the lambs of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, as commanded. All right? And this lesson today is all through the spirit. Whatever the spirit allows, that, that would I speak upon to the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. And hopefully, I don't want to write by the end of this lesson. Uh, the elect of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai be edified. Okay? So, um, with that being said, I mean, where do, where do I start, man? It's, it's just so much. <laughs> it's just so much, man. I came to my car, you know, as I usually do on my break. You know, I didn't really, I didn't really have a title to go into. But, you know, when it's like that, sometimes it just roll in the spirit, you know. The Lord will give you things to speak through the spirit. All you got to do is set up, you know, set up, set up a prior. You know, you don't have to force the, force the, the course of the river, so to speak. You know, but you set up some some prize. But with so much going on in this world, how can you not have things to speak about? You know? For an example, I came to work today. They just told us about three weeks ago in our area, because of the area we in we work in, we gotta wear up, we gotta put on masks again. Okay, I came to work today. <laughs> they say we no longer gotta wear them. You see what I'm saying? It's just pure back and forth. Okay? Babylon is through, man. Okay, you got you have distrust of nations going on. We see what happened over there in Sri Lanka. Okay, the president or prime minister, whatever he is of that country, he had to run away, man. He had to flee, get out, out of there. All right, he couldn't stay. There's no telling what had happened to them people that find him. They was all up in his palace. Okay, and that's the times that we're coming into, man. The scripture speaks about uh, 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 Second uh, Ezra, the 15th chapter. Okay, in, in the 16th chapter, man, these things, these things are going to occur, man, a sedition among men. Okay, they're not going to regard their kings nor princes, man. People are going to be upset when they, when, they, when they find out they, they was bamboozled. Okay, yeah. Okay. Forced to shoot a jump shot. Okay, and then only, only one year later they tell you you don't got to do it no more. Okay, so, <laughs> yeah, man, it's going down. It's going down. The prophecies are going forth. We've seen it, man. Distrust among nations, man. Nations are, 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 are being starved out now. Okay, Look what's happening in Somalia? Okay, we see the war that's going on in Ukraine. Okay, well, between Russia and Ukraine, they're responsible for a certain amount of the world's wheat, and wheat is used to make a lot of products. Okay, a lot of a lot of third world countries, they they use that wheat, man. Okay. So, hey, <laughs> your president told you that the shortages of food are going to be real. How can you not have something to speak about when all of these things are happening simultaneously, man? War is being uh, prepared. Okay? The, 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 the Euphrates River is dried it up. The scripture speaks about that, man. Okay? The river is being dried up to make way way for the, the, the kings of the east, man. Prophecy is happening, man. How can you not see it, man? All right? But then again, the Lord blind a lot of our people, so at the end of the day, that's why they ain't going to get it. Okay? But the scriptures say, man, the scriptures say, let's get that scripture as a matter of fact, man. The scriptures say, you go here to, uh, what's that? St. John, the 7th chapter and the, and the 38th verse, it tells you, man, this is red letter. This is our Lord speaking. It says, he that believe it on me as the scripture had said 
Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Okay? So how, how, how are you not going to have things to speak about with all of this stuff that's happening? All of the signs that the Lord left us. Matthew chapter 24, 6 through 8. Okay? And there shall be wars and rumors of wars. See that he be not troubled, for the end is not yet. Okay? Roughly paraphrasing. Okay? Nations that rise against nations. We've seen it, man. We've seen nations jockeying for position, man. We've seen this. Okay? These are just the beginning of sorrows, it says in the 8th verse, man. The Lord left us the signs. We've seen these stuff. So we have things to talk about and speak about. Okay? Distress of nations with perplexity. We've seen what's happening with all of these different nations, man. Let's get that, man. Let's go to the book of Luke. This is Luke, uh, the 21st chapter. Jumping at verse 25, it says, And there shall be signs in the sun, okay, and in the moon. Right? Haven't we been si seeing signs, man? All of these different signs the Lord left us. All of these different uh, 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 blood moons, okay? And in the stars and upon the earth, distrust of nations. Distrust of nations with perplexity, man. Okay? Let's get this word. Let's get the word distress. And we're going to get the word perplexity, man. Let's, let's do that real quick for this lesson. Okay? Let's, let's, let's get it real quick, man. This is the online, uh, online etymology for the word um, distress. It says, circumstances that causes anxiety or hardship. Okay, people are going through hardships, man. Okay, it says, uh, restraint, affliction, narrow, narrowness, distress. Okay, draw apart, hinder. Okay, compel. Okay, compel also going into force. Okay, coerce. You're being coerced. Okay, draw tight. Press. Press together. The squeeze, man. Yeah, the squeeze is on, man. Okay? The squeeze. All right? It says, um, see strain. Okay, it says meaning anguish, grief, pain, or suffering of the body. Or mine. I got more it's from constrain or compel by pain, suffering, or other circumstances. Hey, Amen. It says distresser, restrain, constrain, afflict, distress. Okay? Harass. Harass. Okay? Hey, man. Hey, these nations are going through it, man. Things. It says up top here. It says, "Press together, man." Okay, and that's. It says, "Draw tight, press together." You see, hey man, ain't no game, man. Let's get this word perplexity. Let's get that word perplexity real quick. Distrust of nations, man. It says, "Press tight, man." Uh, draw tight, press together. The squeeze, man. This is the online etymology for the word perplexity. It says uncertainty. See, this is how people is living. They live in an uncertainty, man. Okay? Confusion. Confusion. And that's what that's what the, the meaning of Babylon. Babylon. Babylon, the word Babylon goes back to the word uh Babal, okay, which, which means confusion or uh, with mixing. Okay? It says confusion, man. So you got bewilderment, doubt, uncertainty, okay, confusion, perplexity, okay, confused, interwoven, <laughs> entangled. You know when something is entangled, you got to take your time to try to untangle it? Well, that's what's going on right now, man. These nations are becoming, uh, are becoming tangled, man. 
I mean, Sri Lanka, look at Sri Lanka, man. Look what just happened in Sri Lanka, man. Okay? That's a that's a tangled situation, man. Not all discombobulated, man. <laughs> okay? And that's going to come here to the daughter of Babylon, man. Okay? Distress with perplexity, man. Now let's go back to the scripture. We always read in the book of Matthew, it says, And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth. Distrust of nations with perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring. This word sea, when you go into it, it means people, man. And the, and, uh, the, the sea and the waves roaring. The people are going to be roaring. The people are going to be in uproar. The scripture tell you that when you go to 2nd Ezra, and the, the ninth chapter, tell you uproars of the people when you see these things begin to come to pass. And we've been seeing that. Over the last few years with the yellow vest, okay, that was 2019, and all those different countries would, took part in up, uproaring against their governments, man. Okay? They were uproaring, man. Uproars of the people. We saw sedition January 6th. That happened at the Capitol, uh, Capitol Hill, right? Capitol building, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Well, this is second edges, nine. I start at one, it says, and he answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself, and when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, so the Lord left signs for us to see, man. It says, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world, which he made. And this is the point. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, Sri Lanka, man, the latest uproars of the people in the world, that president or whoever he was, he had to flee. He had to get out of there. They were swimming in the pool, diving in those beds. One of the guys, when they interviewed me, said, he, he can see why they ain't they ain't got no time for the country. They do with all them stuff with inside that palace. <laughs> the guy said, you see why they ain't got no time to run the country. This shit, man, hey, man. Uproars of the people, man. Okay. That's 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 in the scripture, man. That's prophecy, man. Okay? That's prophecy, man. Okay? That's prophecy, man. When you go here, what it is, uh This is uh Revelation 17. Okay? Revelation 17. Real quick, it says, And there came one of the seven angels, which had seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sit upon many waters. Okay? Upon many waters. Those waters, the sea, they represent the people, man, whom the kings of the earth had committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been drunk with the wine of her fornication. So all these nations follow after Babylon, man. You drink that Babylon juice, okay? When you jump down here, it shows it break it down to you when you go to the 15th verse. It says, And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest were says, the waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, okay, are peoples. Okay, so the waters, the sea represent people, man. And multitudes and nations and tongues. So when we go back here, I bring that out just to show you. When you go back to, uh, I was reading from uh, Luke, Luke 21, Luke 21, and it says, right here where we was reading from, and it says, 25 again, and there shall be uh, signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea, meaning the people, and the waves roaring, Uproars, man, of the people, man. We just went into it. Went into it. Second Ezra, uh, nine and three, and verse three, where it tells you that and when there shall be seen uproars of the people and the and the earth. Roughly paraphrasing now. Okay, then shall thou very understand that at the very same time the Most I spake of those things from the days uh, that were before thee, man. Roughly paraphrasing now again. Okay, so uproars of the people. I mean, we could go. We could get it in our apocryphal. We bring it out all the time. Okay, second Ezra chapter 15, jumping here at verse 14. Okay, 
and it says, uh, Woe, woe means destruction. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. And we in these times, man. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1 says, And this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Okay, perilous. When you go into that word perilous, it means dangerous, hard to do, hard to take, savage, fierce. These are the times that, that's upon us, man. We in the end days, end times right now. It says, For the sword and their destruction draw it nigh. And one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. Don't this nation is divided, man? And the scripture tell you, if a house be divided against itself, if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. That's scriptural, man. Okay, it's scriptural. It happened to us, and it's going to happen to any nation. Okay, that that's divided, man. It happened in Israel. Okay, when, when, when the split came after Solomon and the split came, we had the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. After that, we went low. We were just doing captivity up, up, up until this very day, Baruch 3 and 8. Yet this day we are in captivity, where we were scattered for a reproach and a curse and to be subject unto payments according to all the iniquity of our forefathers, man. We live under the curses of the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter from the 15th verse on down to the 68th verse. Okay, because we transgress against the Lord, man. We still paying for that for this very day, man. But the Lord is coming to de deliver us. He say, he's going to have mercy on us when you read uh, Isaiah, the 14th chapter, beginning at the top of the verse. He said, yet will he have mercy upon us, man? Okay. You can go there and read it. As a matter of fact, I mentioned it. I'm going to it real quick. It's only I only got to read the first two verses. Okay, let's, let's read the scriptures, man. Isaiah 14, 1. And two, it says, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. So even though we're in captivity until this very day, the Lord says he's still going to have mercy on us. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Who is Jacob? The progenitor or the patriarch of the 12 tribes of Israel, man. Okay, that's where the Israelites. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. Right now, because we're behind enemy lines, we need to get back in our own land. But a, a, a certain... certain uh, Certain things have to happen before. Certain prophecies have to go forth and be fulfilled before we get back into the land. Okay? The land have to be purified. That's another thing. Okay? And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. You see? That's it, man. I just wanted to bring that point out real quick now. So going back. Um, Second Ezra is the 15th chapter. Okay? And... It says, reading verse 16, Marie 15 again, it says, For the sword and their destruction draw it nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another. Why? Because the place is divided, man. And swords in their hands. There shall be sedition among men. And that, once again, you, you saw a piece of that January 6th, man. Okay? Uh, it's 2021, I believe. Right. So, yeah. Um... And invading one another, they shall not regard their kings nor princes. See that a very the very recent uh, example of that is Sri Lanka. Okay, they didn't regard their 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 their, their, their king or princess, man, the the authority. Okay, they didn't regard the authority there, man. They ran him out of his palace, out of the country, for that matter. I said, for there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their action shall stand in their power. Okay? A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. These are the times that we're coming into. Martial law. And we know when martial law kicks in, the constitution goes out of the window. Right? It says, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled and houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. Okay, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Yeah, man. Okay, food shortages, man. People ain't like the elder apostle to us. Say, I listened to one of his videos this morning. People ain't buying shoes and pants and shirts no more, man. They buying food. Gas price still high. Groceries still high. People ain't got time to be buying uh, big flat screen TVs and these kind of stuff. People just trying to survive. They can feel the changes in the time. Okay? But you better prepare your heart, mind, and soul and repent. Turn to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near.
that suggests that it's, it's going to be a time. He ain't going to be nigh. You got to do it now while you have this great spirit to do it, while you have liberty to do so. The scripture speaks about that because there is such thing as the famine of the word. This word is precious, so you have to get it now. Okay? If you lose this time, this opportunity to get it while it's hot, <laughs> you ain't going to be able to, 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 to find this word, man, because you need teachers. Okay? You need the Holy Spirit. You need the Lord to come and sup with you. Okay? But if you don't do it now, you ain't going to be able to do it when uh, the elect is sealed, man, as the scriptures say, speaks about how the four winds are being held back, okay, to hurt not the, the, the trees, the land nor the trees, okay, roughly paraphrasing, uh, I think that's uh, Revelation, the seventh chapter, okay, until the servants of the Most High are sealed in their foreheads, man, okay, and after the, the, the elect is sealed, man, <clears throat> it's going to be, it's going to be all hell breaking loose on earth, man, okay, so, I, I, I don't have time to go to the, I'm to the, to, to, to the chapter right now. But as a matter of fact, let me read it. It says, Revelation 7 and verse 1, it says, After these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Okay, this is talking about the destruction, man, that's coming. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living power, and cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. So the destruction is being, the destruction is, is, is ready to go, man, at, 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 at any given moment from, from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. It's just that, that it's not the time yet, okay? And it's, 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 it's going to be held back until the elect is sealed, Okay, and when they're sealed, there comes the famine of the word, man. You're not going to be able to get this word anymore, okay? It says, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our power, Yahweh, in their foreheads, okay? And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel, and, and th those are the men that are going to be the ruling government. They're going to be ruling along with Yahweh Shai, okay? King David under Yahweh Shai, uh, the 12, sitting on those uh, 12 uh, uh, judging seats, judging the tribes, okay? The 144,000 and the 130 lakh men, women, and children ruling over all the nations on the planet Earth, man, okay? So, there you have it, man, all right? Repent. Get this word while you can. Because clearly you can see we're living in the last days. You have to turn and repent to the Lord, man. Acts 3 and 19, repent, the, repent ye therefore and be converted so that your sins may be blotted out when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, man. So we cannot stress that enough because we know that the scriptures say you're not going to have excuse in that day. The Lord say, had he didn't come, if he didn't come, you would have uh, 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 you wouldn't have no uh, no sin. But the fact that he came, you're not gonna have no, no excuse, man. Okay, you're not gonna have no excuse. All right, in that day when the Lord returns, the Lord not returning with candy and roses, man. Isaiah 66 and 15 let you know how the Lord is coming, man, with fire and with his chariots, and he shall plead with all flesh, roughly paraphrasing. And it ain't, it's no game, man. Okay, so it would behoove you to seek the Lord. I'm off to end it there. Lord willing, this was uh, edifying to, to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai's elect. On to the next one. Shalom.